I think we should start. I think we have enough folk that have signed on and, and they are uh, over 40. That is good. Yeah, that's very good. I'd like to welcome everyone to Tuesday Open House. This is a kind of a new experience this year and I think it's working quite well. Uh, for your information, when we get to the point in this event, when we turn over to the program, we will ask everyone to stop their video and go on to mute while our speaker is presenting. And then we will also ask that if you have questions, you write them in the chat room and Dick Lundgren will be reading them at the end of the presentation so that they can be answered by our speaker. So the speaker won't have to modify or, or watch the chat room. We'll have someone watching the chat room for her. And then uh, we will have several of our committee members that will have responsibility for this event, which is Mary Jo Thorsheim, who will be introducing the speaker, Dick Lundgren, who will be um, reading the chat questions, and Sherry Johnson, who will be doing our devotions. And then there are some announcements that need to be made. And so I'll call on Nancy Olson right now so she can give her announcement. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, Norway House is presenting a, a program this Sunday at two o'clock, the ha Habistad Ensemble, Echoes of Norway. This is a family from Norway and it's musicians, uh, uh, you know, from, uh, grandparents to grandchildren and, and sons and daughters that will be performing. Um, you can get, you can sign up for it at the norwayhouse.org uh, website under Edward Greek Society. The performance is free. If you want, would like to make a don donation, of course, we would love to have that. And it's on behalf of the Edward Greek Society. And I can put in the chat room, the norwayhouse.org website. Um, you just go in and and uh, you know, say that you want to attend, and you like I say, no money is required to attend, although we would like it. So, and um, what time? What time? It's at two o'clock on Sunday, and it's a, a the performance will be about an hour. There'll be a little introduction, performance, and then there's going to be a chat with the family in Norway afterwards, and you get it. It's it's like an. A, you know, a Zoom meeting, just like we're having here. And so it's already pre-recorded. And then afterwards, if you can't make it on Sunday, it will be on, um, I'm just having a mental block right now, YouTube. It'll be on YouTube and you can get to that website through our, through Norway House or the Facebook page in case you're not able to attend on Sunday, so. Mary Jo. I just add? A little bit, Nancy, isn't it correct that the father is one of Norway's leading composers and musicians, Havastad, the father? I think that's um, correct. And I, I'm not sure, Mary Jo, because I'm, I'm Bill yeah. Halverson is the one who uh, got right. him. Right, and the father, I'm, I think, is very famous is in his own right, so it should be tremendous. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be really good. And there is a little preview that you can go out and listen to it ahead of time, right? It's, it should be out there now if you go out to Norway House website and you can preview the performance. And I know that Bill Halverson has been very generous in organizing other places to set up that same program. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Moving, moving on, we have a couple more announcements. First, I would like to say that I see that people are reading our communicator or going to our website because we had a very good response uh, last for 2020 regarding our virtual sessions. And so we had a very good report for the end of the year as we do an end of year report for the church. And then um, we also announced in the communicator that we are celebrating the 99th birthday of the church. And every year we have been collecting um, birthday gifts and we have given many many things to the church one of the examples is that the uh, electronic screen pulled out in the fellowship hall was provided by tuesday open house and 
people who installed it were men from Tuesday Open House. So we try to do things that are part of the church where this next year, the dollars that we are collecting will go towards a special project to help with our 100th anniversary. And that will be uh, for the year 2022. So we, we are collecting for uh, 99 years. And if you wanna check on how we, the kind of suggestions we made is in the communicator and I won't go over it right now. And now I'd like to turn the mic over to Sherry Johnson, who will be doing our devotions. And following that, I will turn it over to Mary Jo. Okay, our devotions this morning, and good morning to all of you, is from Christ in Our Home for January 12th. The prayer concern today is those held back by fear, hatred, and division. I would add a little corollary to that and say those ruled by fear, hate, and division. The title of the um, reading is Blinded by the Light. And it's the story of Paul's uh, conversion. So here is uh, what I will read from the book of Acts 22. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus, and I was brought up and educated here in Jerusalem under Gamaliel. As his student, I was carefully trained in our Jewish laws and custom. I became very zealous to honor God in everything I did, just like all of you today. And I was persecuted, and I persecuted the followers of the way, hounding some to death arresting both men and women and throwing them in prison. The high priest and the whole council of elders can testify that this is so, for I received letters from them to our Jewish neighbor brothers in Damascus, authorizing me to bring the followers of the way from there to Jerusalem in chains to be punished. As I was on the road approaching Damascus, about noon, a very bright light from heaven suddenly shone down around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus the Nazarene, the one you are persecuting. The people saw the people with me saw the light but didn't understand the voice speaking to me. I asked, "What should I do, Lord?" And the Lord told me, "Get up and go to Damascus, and there you will be told everything you are to do." I was blinded by the intense light and had to be led by the hand to Damascus by my companions. A man named Ananias lived there. He was a godly man, deeply devoted to the law, and well regarded by all the Jews of Damascus. He came and stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. In that very moment, I could see. Then he told me, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and hear him speak. For you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. What are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. The devotion says, Saul had it all. As a learned scholar and agent of the temple, he had a sense of self and purpose in a seemingly clear future. But all that disappeared in a flash of bright light from the heavens. Saul was left vulnerable with diminished capacities and an uncertain future. It took another person, Ananias, fearful yet faithful Ananias, who knew that when Christ calls, Christ asks for one's all. 
<clears throat> to go to Paul and baptize him. The rest, as they say, is history. Saul, Christ denier and persecutor of the church, is given by God the new identity of Paul, apostle to the Gentiles. With vision restored, Paul leaves Damascus and boldly follows Christ's radiance into a future rooted in God's promise. Sometimes we all act like Paul, denying our Lord in countless ways. Sometimes we are fearful like Ananias, but we need only to look to that dazzling light that is Christ continuing to call us and lead us to new life. Shall we pray? Lord, may your dazzling light dispel our fears and trepidations and illumine the path you wish to, us to follow. Amen. Thank you. And uh, and one other thing, anybody that wants to volunteer to do the devotion, that would be great. And that was an announcement I was going to make, and you beat me to it. And thank you very much, because I think that's important. We've been relying on our committee members to take responsibility. And it certainly would be nice if there's someone in the audience that would contact us and say, we're willing to do devotions for our next meeting which will be in February on the 10th. And the more information will be in the communicator about that. It will be an interesting program. And then um, I do need to talk about the sequence before I turn it over to Mary Jo. It will be Mary Jo introducing the speaker. Dick Lundgren will be reading the chat, uh, the questions and answers that you write in the chat room. And following that, Pastor, Anna Britt Olsland will uh, make church announcements and also um, uh, end our program. So with that, I will turn it over to Mary Jo Thorsheim, who is a member of our committee. And well, before that, will everyone please shut off their video, except for the people that have assignments now, and turn off their, their mics. Should I, should I wait a little while people do that or go ahead? You can go ahead. All right, I'm going ahead. And next program is Rolf Erdahl and Carrie, uh, who play oboe and bass, experts in Greek, and uh, that should be a really fun program. I think they'll broadcast from their home in Apple Valley. And uh, it should be wonderful music and, and uh, also fun. Well, it's an honor to uh, welcome and introduce. Oh, Mary Jo, I'm sorry, Un unmute yourself. I unmute yourself. Mary Jo, you got muted somehow. Can you unmute yourself, please? Did I do it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. oh boy. An electronic quiz. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of quizzes, uh, Lorianne certainly is one. I met her a couple of years ago when she helped me with placing an ad in the Norwegian American newspaper um, for my business for Norway art. And she was, I think at the time, helping out at the Norwegian American newspaper and had a tremendous uh, position in the electronic industry, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, we had a long distance uh, connection then for a couple of years. And uh, well, over all this time, she visited Minneapolis uh, for sitting to my activities a couple years ago, came to Tuesday open house, visited various programs here. It was wonderful to, to meet her then face to face and we're good friends and frequently in touch about the newspaper and in our own activities too. I asked Lorianne to send me some information about herself and her resume is long, 
So I'll hit some highlights uh, of what she's done. It's really impressive and what she's doing now. She's a native of Seattle, studied at the University of Washington and UCLA in languages and literature, Scandinavian in Washington, Germanic at UCLA. Then spent many years studying and working abroad before embarking on a career in translation and international software localization. Don't ask me what that is, ask her in chat. <laughs> uh, it sounds very complicated. At Microsoft, she worked as program manager on the Web Essentials office and MSN teams. Upon retirement from the software industry, Lorianne began to help out at the Norwegian American, first as a writer, and now she finds herself editing the newspaper editor in chief and bringing this uh, only remaining Norwegian American newspaper uh, into a new era. She's been deeply involved in the Nordic community, first as a musical performer at major festivals. She plays piano, accordion, is a singer, both classical and um, folk music, as I know. Serves on the boards of several organizations, the 17th of May Committee in Seattle for many years. She's president of the Seattle Bergen Norway Sister City Association. Um, Vice President of the Northwest Edvard Grieg Society and a founding member of Nordic Seattle, which is an umbrella group for Nordic organizations. That sounds like a good idea. She loves to travel, especially to Norway in the Midwest, and is also a good friend of many organizations in the Midwest, Vesterheim, Norway, House, and as she says, Last but not least, Mindy Shirkin. Thank you, Jeanette Hendrickson, for technical assistance in the committee for their interest in inviting Lorianne today. Looking forward to hearing from Lorianne and welcome, Lorianne. Thank you, uh, Mary Jo. I, first, I want to say what an honor it is for me to be invited to present today. As Mary Jo said, um, I was at Mindeshirka to celebrate 17th of May two years ago, and I was so impressed with what you do with your community. And I realized while we're very proud of our Nordic heritage here in Seattle that, um, well, Minneapolis, Minnesota, you really are the epicenter of the, the Nordic community uh, here in North America. So, um, and it, it's, it's an honor to be here with Mary Jo, who's been such a good friend and so supportive. And I, I'll talk about uh, her contributions to the newspaper as well as we get into our presentation. So I'm going to share my screen now. Let's see. Can you all see it? Yes. Great. So the Norwegian American, as Mary Jo said, we are America's oldest and only Norwegian newspaper established on May 17th, 1889. And I, I think this is something that the entire Norwegian community can be very proud of that they still have a newspaper. As, as all of you know, um, small newspapers are disappearing at an uh, unprecedented rate right now in the United States uh, for a number of reasons. People are reading more on the web. The cost of uh, printing the paper has increased and also the cost of postage. Um, and there's overwhelming competition to get people's attention these days. So. Uh, I'm very proud that we still have our paper publishing. Uh, sometimes I feel like it's a miracle 
that we do get it out every two weeks or so. Um, but the good news um, is that the Norwegian American is doing quite well. Uh, in 2020, we increased our subscribership and we closed the year without a deficit for the first time in many years. And I think that says a lot about the strength of our community here in North America. We publish uh, a printed newspaper, approximately 24 to 30 pages, twice a month. Uh, and many of you are subscribers, I think, so you know what that looks like. And we also have a web presence uh, where we publish continuously. Um, the, Issues are put up on the web on a continuous basis. Uh, so people are always finding something new when they go up there and you can see what they, they look like here. And the web presence is growing rather quickly as well because that's where a lot of younger readers consume their information. And we, we find that very important. We're putting a strong emphasis on improving um, what we're offering on the web. We have a very well-defined mission and dedicated mission because our mission is what drives us. We want to provide information to Norwegians and people of Norwegian heritage living uh, in the United States and North America with an outreach to a broader community, both at home and abroad. And I should underline that there's a lot of people that subscribe to this newspaper that are not of Norwegian heritage. Um, they tell me that they're very interested in Norway because of the many advancements in Norwegian society or they've known somebody who is a Scandinavian American or a Norwegian American and um, they, they wanna learn more about it or perhaps they wanna to travel to Norway. So our goal is to connect Norwegian Americans to their heritage. Um, it's so rich, the, the literature, the art, the political history, um, all of the accomplishments, while at the same time building bridges to contemporary Norway. And I think this is very, very important because uh, Norway is at the forefront of so many things. Uh, it's easier to travel there uh, it's easier to gain knowledge and young people really, really are interested in contemporary Norway. We focus on current events. Uh, and I'll talk more about that later. Business, art, and uh, culture with a forward thinking thrust for future generations. And I probably should have underlined that because um, this is important. Uh, Younger generations, that's our future. We want them to influence our society in a positive way. Um, and, and face it, we're not gonna live forever. We have an important mission to hand over our culture to future generations. So the paper, as I said, uh, goes back to 1889. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about the history of that a bit with very strong brand recognition. We, we've been a lot around for a long time. As I said, we're at least 24 pages, twice monthly, 22 issues a year. We're now taking a publishing break in August. This gives us time to refresh ourselves, to uh, do strategic planning, and, and above all, to travel. Um, we, we like to get over to Norway as, as, as much as we can and a summer break gives us an opportunity to do that. Um, we're, we don't know how it's gonna go this year, but we're hoping that we'll be able to travel to Norway this year as well. We have a global editorial team, and this is something I'm quite proud of, the, the number of people supporting this paper um, and the quality of the contributors. We have, uh, a presence throughout the United States of, of writers who contribute. Uh, naturally, they're concentrated in areas where there were Norwegian settlements, New York, 
uh, Minneapolis, uh, various places in the Midwest. Uh, we have people in Washington, DC. We have uh, contributors from Florida, Texas, and California. And then we have a number of writers who are based in Norway. Uh, some of them are Norwegian Americans, expatriates, but many who are uh, native Norwegians who contribute to the paper. Um, and then, as I said, we have our continuous publishing at the website. Currently, we have about 2,400 print subscribers and 2,600 digital subscribers. And I, I will say, quite frankly, it's not enough. We need many more. Uh, we would like to build out the presence of the paper, and that takes, that takes money. Um, we want to build up a fund to support the growth of the paper. Uh, that said, we estimate that the readership could be up to four times that because a lot of the papers go out to clubs and organizations and are shared throughout the community. We also publish a weekly e-newsletter, which I think some of you are familiar with. Um, it kind of highlights what's coming out in an issue. Uh, it also gives us a chance to send out important messages to the readers. And that's a great place to advertise events because the advertising spot <laughs> of the newsletter is so reasonable and it goes out to over 6,000 people. And then we have over 20,000 followers on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And that's quite a significant number. Now, the million dollar question is, how do you convert these followers to subscribers? Nobody really seems to know. We're working at that. And if anyone knows how, let us know. So who we are. The owner of the paper is Ragnar Meyer Knudsen. He is a shipping broker based in New York, uh, a wonderful person. He has generously supported the newspaper over a number of years and continues to do so. Um, I am the editor in chief and actually the de facto managing editor as well. Andy Meyer, our assistant editor, he is also a lecturer of Norwegian at the University of Washington. He's currently on paternity leave for this first quarter. So we really miss Andy while he's gone. Matea Bertlig, she's our design editor. She's a very young and uh, innovative and talented uh, graphic artist and um, is doing a fantastic job to help us improve the visual aspect of the paper. Deborah stoner Moss, she's our business manager. Debbie had a, a long career in sciences and she's really good with numbers and data. And she retired and uh, she loves Norway. She spent a year in Drammen, Norway as an exchange student and she's been a, a great add to our team. We have Becky Krusiendem, our copy editor. She's bilingual, uh, does a fantastic job to uh, clean up the paper every week. It's amazing how many iterations of proofreading you have to go through to get good copy, but she she's really, she's got the eye for it. And we have Madison Leyren, who uh, is deeply involved in the Norwegian community. She's our ads and marketing manager. Madison has her own business on the side as well. She makes uh, fashion, Norwegian inspired fashion, and she's gone into producing designer masks during the COVID-19 period. And she uh, has done a wonderful job uh, on our marketing side of things and is helping us with ads now because she's, she knows what it takes to grow a business. And then, as I mentioned, we have the global section editors and contributors uh, based around all over the world. So we have an editor for travel, we have an editor for sports, one for business, and um, one for food. We like to think of ourselves as a very modern publication. 
Um, and what does that mean? Uh, it means that we provide content that is relevant to current times, but we also um, try to keep the paper looking modern as much as we can. And a lot of changes have taken place over the last year and a half. Um, we've put more emphasis on the visual, uh, more photos, because I believe uh, that photos and images really tell a story too. It's not just the words. Uh, we put a lot of effort into our covers. People tell me that they love the paper's covers because they're, they're colorful and beautiful photography. And, and the same thing with our website. Um, the website offers us even more flexibility in terms of images. And um, we can link to related content and um, really enhance the experience there as well. So even if, if you're a print subscriber, I think it's worth looking at the website too to see what, what's coming up there, what's offered. Um, I mentioned uh, our designer uh, and the importance of the visuals. Here's just a few examples of these, these covers that we're so proud of. Um, sometimes it will be a, a famous Norwegian artist or the, the cover may relate, relate to a, a feature story, this story about the new Dijkman Library in um, Oslo was very, very popular or a holiday, Sitten um, That's one of our absolutely most popular issues. We had a huge challenge in 2020 uh, on how to put that issue together because all of a sudden with uh, the coronavirus, uh, it, it became something very different. Um, so many events were canceled or, or, or most of them really, both in Norway in the United States. So we, we had sort of a, a look back to our heritage in that issue and the historical symptom. And that's a, a photo of the mural at Bergen Place uh, in the Seattle's Ballard neighborhood. And we also did cover uh, all of the things going on around the world for Sitten that were virtual. It was, it was really a, a fun and interesting issue despite the circumstances last year. We'll see how this year goes. It will most likely be something different as well. And then we celebrate all the major uh, holidays in Norway and Norwegian America. Good Poska, our Easter issue, our Christmas issues are very important. And then we have special issues. We did one on winter sports last year. And uh, that is a uh, uh, image from the movie that was made about Sonia Petty a few years ago. And uh, we also did a special issue on Arctic issues, which was uh, very interesting. Uh, as Norway, of course, is an Arctic nation and is a leader in Arctic studies. Uh, why we are different. And, Sometimes I've been out to Sons of Norway lodges and people will ask me, well, why should I subscribe to this newspaper? I get the Viking magazine. And the first thing I'll say is that we are a news organization. We really are a newspaper. We subscribe to the Norwegian Newswire, NTB. Uh, so we really, we can go up to the Newswire and see the news coming down literally by the minute. And this has been a change that we made at the paper in 2020, and it has really enhanced the quality of our content. We are up to date as much as possible from a very reliable news source. It would be like uh, subscribing to the Associated Press here in this country. Uh, we could pull the content, we have the rights to translate it. We have the rights to edit it for our purposes. And we could also uh, access their image bank, which 
includes photographs from some of the best photographers in Norway. Um, it's also made our work much easier to do that. We're also affiliated with uh, the local, which is a uh, English language newspaper in Norway. We have the same rights with them and have a, a reciprocal relationship. And then, as I said, we have all these correspondents on the ground in Norway and in the United States. I would say we have expert contributors. And um, one of them I know is, is in the virtual room with us right now, Mary Jo Thorsheim, who writes about uh, Norwegian art for us. But we also have uh, contributors who are uh, writing about sports who are, I would say are accredited professionals in the area of business. Michael Kleiner, our editor, he's a graduate of uh, the Wharton School in Pennsylvania. Uh, Jasper Falk in Oslo, he studied both uh, at Nor Norway's most prestigious business school and at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Uh, Arts, of course, Mary Jo, I just mentioned. We also have uh, a column about Edvard Grieg's music, the Grieg Notes column. Bill Halverson and Sylvia um, Reynolds Eckes, two of the world's most foremost experts on Grieg, curate the column. And um, the, the quality of the contributors there, it's, it's just phenomenal. Um, the column is followed by many people in Norway for that reason. We have an excellent food editor, Christy Olson Field, who actually previously was an editor of this newspaper. And um, she's bringing in uh, recipes and interviews with some of the, the most well-known uh, Nordic food bloggers. Uh, we even have a comics section and um, Starting last year, we started featuring Frederick Skoglund, who is uh, maybe one of Norway's most famous journalists and just a, a marvelous cartoonist as well. I would say we offer unique content. Um, we have a Norwegian news section, the Nyheter section, uh, this is where the content is being pulled from the newswire. People will say, well, I can, I can read this on the web, uh, often post in a big a, a Bergen's Teed and all these newspapers are published online. That, that is true. However, they cost a lot of money to subscribe to. Uh, we subscribe to them all and scan them for stories and then look for the content on the newswire. So you could get a, a compendium of stories uh, through us without having to subscribe to those newspapers. And we try to pull stories that we feel are relevant to the Norwegian American community. So I, I, I like to think of our paper as a sort of a reader's digest. The same goes for the news. Uh, we translate the stories for the news section that we think will be of interest to our readers. We have a research and science uh, section and there we have dedicated contributors. We have Ilan Kelman, who is a professor at the University of Agder, who writes for us. We have John Eric Stacy, who is a microbiologist now living back in Minnesota. They not only provide great content, they have colleagues who provide great content. Uh, we feature diplomacy. Uh, we have a strong relationship with the embassy in DC. And in one of our uh, upcoming issues, there will be an interview with the new ambassador. Uh, the business section, as I mentioned, is quite strong. And I think this is a really, really uh, interesting section because um, with our contacts in Norway, we learned about a lot of new startups, uh, ideas, innovations, even opportunities for people interested in investing. The sports section, a lot of fun for many of the readers. Uh, 
there's coverage of uh, skiing and other sports that you just don't see at the same depth uh, in our uh, American media. And um, there I have to say, there's the Norwegians that they're right on top, especially with winter sports. So we always enjoy that. Travel, this is a section where we made some different changes in our editorial policy in 2020. In the past, the travel section really was more uh, focused on travel anywhere. Now we really focus only on travel to Norway, um, the Nordic countries or Nordic related destinations, both uh, in Europe and in the United States. And there the Midwest figures very prominently. There's so much to see in the Midwest of the old Norwegian settlements uh, in your own city, for example. And um, well, it's been challenging <laughs> during COVID, I have to say, because we can't really travel, but we've, we've managed to pull in good content nonetheless, but I, I, I can't wait to get back on the road there. Um, Ingrid Jordahl, one of our writers uh, in Norway, wants to come and do a road trip through the Midwest with me, and I'm, I'm game for that. Um, I will say this has been a self-financed endeavor on my own part. I, I love traveling. I love getting out to meet people, and the newspapers just offered me a great vehicle to do that. Um, we're always grateful if people will sponsor us and help us along the way. Taste of Norway, as I mentioned, the food section, very popular with our readers. Uh, the Norwegian heritage section, this is where we write about prominent figures in Norwegian history, prominent places. Um, Rose mauling is, has been a popular uh, topic there. There's so many popular, uh, interesting topics to write about there. Norway near you would be uh, content more locally related. So if you have something important going on at Mindeshirke, let, let me know um, and I can get it on the editorial calendar and get the word out for you. Norsk Språk, the comics, that are a lot of fun. We publish bilingual content there. We've partnered with Astri by Astri Publishing in Iowa. And uh, we have plans to publish some new things in 2021 there that you haven't seen before. We have a, a Born Abroad once a month. And these are projects and ideas, things that you could do with your kids and grandkids. Um, I think this could be valuable to um, a lot of programs at churches or at clubs. If you want to do things with children, we try to keep uh, the projects simple, but something to get the kids interested in their her heritage. And then the bulletin board, which is kind of a catch-all community bulletin board where we publish photos that you send in about your events. So don't forget about that. And then the events calendar, which in 2020 went online because really most events are online these days and we can put the links there. We can publish photos to go with the events. And we also have um, enhanced the online experience. Uh, we can offer search engine optimization so people can find the events online better. We're building that out and partnering with different organizations there to uh, build out the calendar. We have, I think, very exclusive interviews. So this is really something exciting and fun. Um, I've interviewed Sissel, Norway's superstar singer, and um, she's an amazingly talented but down-to-earth person, and has been partnering with us more and more on different um, uh, features. 
I, I am so impressed. I'm so amazed because we are not a big newspaper, but the minute you reach out to these very important people in Norway and tell them that you're with the only Norwegian American newspaper left and would they consider giving you an interview? They say, oh yes, of course we'll do it. I, I've never had anyone say no. So I really reach for the stars and um, it's exciting. Uh, we've worked with Rick Steves. I got to interview him. He lives north of Seattle at Edmonds. And I'm not sure everybody knows that Rick is 100% Norwegian in his background. Um, his, he was born Rick Ronstad. And uh, his name got changed to Steves when his mother remarried. He took on his stepfather's name. And he, he told me he, he really regrets that, that his Norwegian heritage is so important to him. He wish he'd kept his name, but maybe Rick Steves is, is better for his career. I don't know. Rick is incredibly generous. He told me, if you ever want to use any content from any of my books, uh, my website, please go ahead, plagiarize it, take it, it's yours. I'll be very happy about it. And uh, we have been working with Rick on, on content. Uh, we did in 2020 and we will be in 2021. Um, I had the great honor of interviewing Leif Uwe Ansnes when he performed the Greek Piano Concerto in Chicago in 2019. Also, just, I didn't even ask for the interview, but apparently when I reached out to Symphony Hall for some photos, I said I was gonna be writing a review of the manager there, talked to Leif Uwe. He said, well, tell her to come in, I'll talk to her. So. Of course, I said, yes, I'll be there. Um, our ambassadors uh, are, are also very, very generous with their time. The council's general, prominent businessmen. Um, we have uh, something special coming up in 2021. Nikolai Tangen, the new uh, uh, head of the Norwegian Wealth Fund, happened to go to school with Michael Kleiner, our business editor. So. We're looking forward to a big interview with him. Star chefs, there's so many in Norway. Um, the food in Norway today is so extraordinary. Sports stars, uh, I've got some exciting plans there uh, coming up with Michael, our sports editor. And then artists, uh, I can't stress how, uh, outstanding Norwegian artists. And it's been, as I mentioned several times, I'm very fun to work with Barry Jo on all of that. Opinions that matter. Um, I, 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 I came onto the paper and um, to be honest, I felt the opinion page needed a lot of work. Um, and I hope that the changes there have been visible. Um, an op-ed page is really designed to be what it is, something opposite the editorial section of the paper with outside contributors coming in. So we really, really worked to build up uh, relationships and uh, encourage people to contribute. We've had some very prominent politicians write for us. There you see to the right, you see Cora Oas, our former Ambassador, uh, we really miss him, but we also love the new ambassador, Annika Kutnes, and she wrote the Christmas message in 2020. Uh, uh, the mayor of Bergen, Martinez Persson, wrote for us for a big Bergen issue. We had uh, we've had members of Norwegian Parliament write for us. Uh, Hovard Sandvik, who is with the Nordmans Verbundet as well, wrote about the importance of educational exchange. Uh, we had another member of parliament write about the importance of Nordic cooperation, and we have many, many things planned for 2021. We've had distinguished researchers write for us about uh, the coronavirus crisis. 
We also get a fair number of Norwegian citizens on the ground who have contributed to the op-ed section, which I think is very interesting. What do uh, Norwegian citizens think about what's going on in the world? How does their viewpoint differ from ours? Uh, in our, our next issue, there is a, a very nice woman from Bergen who wrote about why she chose to get vaccinated and how important that is. Uh, she said coronavirus is no joke. Um, of course, we agree with that. And um, I think you'll find it interesting to, to see what she has to say. We have uh, in Norwegian American leaders that contribute. Uh, Christina Carlton from Norway House has written for us. So uh, we've had people from the big museums contribute. We've had our community spiritual leaders uh, offer words of inspiration. And there I want to say thank you to Pastor Anhevrit Osslad. She's uh, been such a great supporter and um, it's offered us so, so much to our community throughout the entire country through our opinion page. And then we have an open forum with our readers. Uh, and uh, I, I really would like to say that it is open to everybody. Uh, we want to print the letters that are sent into us, providing they don't incite violence or contain inappropriate language or, or slander anyone. And this last point, no political bias, this is, this is uh, well, it, it's not, can't be completely true because everything's going to have a bias uh, by virtue of the fact of what you choose to publish or don't publish. But we really try to be objective and let everybody have their voice heard. Our ads, um, a great opportunity to get the word out about what, about what you're doing. Um, our ad policy is a little bit different maybe than from that of other publications. We really only take ads that relate to our community and our mission. So the ads that we publish have to do with Nordic American uh, endeavors or enterprises. Um, and we really work to uh, make them look good if we design them, we have the design services that we think are quite excellent. And so you see a couple of examples of that. Um, or you could turn in your own ad like this, this one for the, the Christmas ornament from the Nordic sh uh, shop. They sent that in. We'll work with you though to optimize it. And I've had a lot of people say they, li they like to read the ads because they're, they provide information and, and they're attractive. And we really work hard to place the ads strategically. Uh, if someone is going to advertise a food product, if possible, we like to get that in the food section. Um, the same thing would go for sportswear. We would try to put that on a sports page, someplace where it might grab the targeted reader's attention. And then of course, look good on the page as well. We, we like to think of ourselves as community partners. Uh, we are constantly in contact with uh, the Sons of Norway and the Daughters of Norway. Uh, we wanna know what they're doing. We wanna report on their events. We wanna support them. Uh, in 2021, I'm going to be working a lot with Daughters of Norway. Daughters of Norway um, named most of their lodges after famous Norwegian American women or, or Norwegian women. For example, Thea Foss here in the Northwest, who founded uh, the famous uh, Toss, uh, Tugboat Company, uh, was a very important community leader here. Uh, in both business and in philanthropy. We're gonna have a feature about her in the next issue. 
or there, there's the Nina Grieg Lodge. Uh, and we're gonna be writing about a lot of these important women in 2021. Um, and then of course, those of Norway, we wanna know what they're doing, help them out, support them. Norway House, great friends. Um, you know, the minute I walked into Norway House, I felt like I'd come home. And uh, I love going there uh, when I come to uh, visit you at Mindeshirket as well. Um, I just felt so welcomed there. And um, they're doing wonderful programs uh, that we want to support. Norway Arch, uh, Mary Jo's monthly column, all the support she's given us. I will, will we do anything for Mary Jo too. The Edvard Grieg Societies, uh, of course, this is very dear to my heart because I, I'm a member of the Edvard Grieg Society here in the Pacific Northwest. Grieg um, truly is my favorite composer. And I'm, I'm not just making that up or saying that. My first piano recital piece was a, a Elephant Tense by Edvard Grieg. And I haven't stopped playing or listening to Grieg ever since. Um, and uh, we're, we're excited about the programs we're doing uh, together with Edvard Grieg. Um, we wanna get the word out. It's, best as possible to help them as well. Vesterheim, uh, a, a wonderful resource for the Norwegian American community. Um, we work with them closely, trying to help them promote their efforts. And I mentioned Astri My Astri Publishing. We have a collaboration with Deb Nelson Gorley on this bilingual uh, content that she provides. Um, we hope people will want to buy her books, of course, as well. The Royal Norwegian Embassy, Sister Cities International. This is a group that I've been involved in for many years. And I think this is a connection that we're going to work on building out more and more. Of course, I'm involved with Bergen, but uh, there are, I think, at least 10 Norwegian sister cities of friendship, cities around the country, we can build out those connections to uh, provide interesting content about what's going on in those relationships. Nordic Seattle, which is this umbrella organization that I uh, am a founding member of, it's basically a calendar clearing house for what goes on in the um, Pacific Northwest um, community here. And, um, we're working to integrate our calendars with them so they will automatically populate. And this is something that I'm gonna work with other organizations as well so we can build out our calendars. Um, the Norwegian American Chambers of Commerce, um, also a very important connection. And then Mindeshirken in Chicago and then Mindeshirken in Minneapolis. Um, whatever I could do for you, please let me know. So um, I just want to highlight one of our examples of community collaboration. Um, and um, this is something I'm very proud of because I was very involved with it on both sides, both at the newspaper and with the Seattle Bergen Sister City Association. Around the 950th birthday celebration of Bergen, we put out a special issue. And um, the entire issue highlighted Bergen, which of course is a, a very, very marvelous place at any rate. And we also co-sponsored a gala virtual concert with the Seattle Bergen Sister City Association and the Northwest Edvard Grieg Society. And what did that mean? Uh, we were involved in the planning, producing the concert. I, of course, I was straddling to three organizations there, but uh, we can support these events. If we can't directly give money, we certainly can give 
publicity to the organizations, which we did. So if you have any big, huge event coming up, we are really willing to uh, step up to the plate and help with the publicity. Uh, it may not be an entire special issue, but it could be expanded articles, feature articles. It could be advertising both on the web, uh, in the newsletter and in the printed edition. Here's just a, a few shots from this concert that I'm so proud of. So what's coming up? We have our special issues that are expanded issues. They all have inserts. Um, they have a focus uh, theme. March 26th will be the Easter issue. So if you would like to contribute something to that, please let me know. Uh, April 9th is going to be a Vikings issue. Um, normally we do a travel issue, but I felt that this year the rest of the team agreed with me that travel was a bit up in the air. Uh, we certainly are going to include travel in this Viking issues because the Vikings were travelers. Um, we want to talk about Vikings in maybe a, a new way, not the old cliches. We're going to have some really great content from historians, uh, artists who are uh, working on Viking inspired art. And um, I think that's going to be kind of exciting, actually. May 7th is the Sitting to My issue, always one of the most popular issues of the year. So please let me know what you're planning to do. And then we have the June 4th Sitting to My photos where we uh, share what's gone on around the world. Um, I will say I probably should put a, a slash Grieg issue. Um, Edward Grieg's birthday is uh, in June. And we're gonna, um, June 15th, and we're gonna put a lot of fun content about Grieg in that issue as well. Summer recreation ideas for summer travel, what to do during the summer, um, big features about Norway. The education issue is always very important uh, with um, information on study abroad, scholarships. Um, so we're looking forward to that. I hope that international exchange will be back in full force in 2022. I think we're all hoping that. And then our holiday gift guide, also very popular. And then the Christmas issue, maybe the most important issue of the year, actually, after 17th of May. That's, that's a toss up. So there's just a few images of what we did for Christmas. Um, we really work a hard on these issues. We put out a whole um, issue about Christmas cookies this year so that was really a lot of fun. It took us about four months to plan it. And we have something special coming up in 2021 as well. But I'm gonna keep that secret for now. So I just wanted to share some reader feedback. Um, it's always so gratifying to get it. Keep up the great work on your wonderful newspaper. Well, boy, we liked hearing that. The paper is getting better and better. So many interesting writers now. Hello all, why wouldn't I renew? This is the most fun paper to read in the country. Thanks for the great work. And then dear Norwegian American, I'm happy to renew my subscription for another year to the Norwegian America. The paper gives me so much joy and um, information. The article in the new Deichford Library was great. And if this awful COVID-19 virus ever goes away, I am going to visit it. That made me happy to hear that we inspired someone that way. Glad that made to better in the of boy. So how do you get all of this? It's only $70 a year for a combo print 
and digital subscription. And I say only because if you divide that by 22, that's, that's less than $4 an issue. Or you can get the digital only for $30 and you could upgrade uh, to the print within a couple of months if you decide that you like it. If you don't know what you wanna do, you can uh, subscribe to two issues for $5.99, which basically just kind of covers our, our admin cost and the postage. So um, I hope you wanna join us. And um, today, um, because I'm so pleased to be here, I wanna offer the option to everyone at uh, Mindeshirkin to subscribe for one year for $56 uh, with a special discount. If you're already a subscriber, you can extend out your subscription for another additional year at $56 as well. So at that, I wanna wish you welcome to the Norwegian American. Thank you. Did anybody have any questions or comments? Yes, uh, th this is Dick Lundgren and I've, I've been gathering the comments that have come in and I'll, I'll read the, what we have so far and uh, make up some other ones later. Anyway, um, this, the first question is from Jerry uh, Ugland to everyone. And the question is, what is the arrangement for Norwegian American organizations for posting notices uh, and or solicitations? Uh, well, uh, of course we have the, the, cal the calendar, the online calendar. So um, you could email to events at na-weekly.com with the information and those generally go up immediately. Uh, we want the, the name of the event, the venue, if there's a cost or not, whether it's online or not, then we would need a link to the event, uh, a link to your website. So that's, that's a free service. Uh, if you want that event to be featured more prominently the calendar with a photo that pops up on that page uh, there's a minimal charge for that and then if if you if you choose to feature the article uh, we could go into the back end of the website and do what we call search engine optimization and that's fiddling around with the code to make it rank higher in a search engine like google or Yahoo, um, which we think is actually a very uh, good enhanced service to offer. And I, the charge is, is minimal for that. It's, it's $10 for a couple of weeks. Um, so, and then if you want to have your event covered in the paper, you have to make sure that you let us know about it in advance and our, our publishing dates are posted on the web. I can also send you a calendar and we can set up uh, either one of our reporters can write about it or you could send us copy about the event. We like to have a good photo, high resolution photo with every article that we publish because the visual side of the paper is so important as well. And then there's advertising. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, a related question to that is um, some of us are involved with putting on the annual Stevna. Many of the different big dialogues put on the Stevna. Um, is that advertised in your newspaper? Um, we certainly would like to if we get the information. That's exactly the kind of event that we would like to cover as well. Okay, um, <clears throat> the next question here is from Nancy Olson to everyone. 
I received the highlights from the Norwegian American. I received the uh, paper newspaper. If I subscribe to the digital, is that the whole newspaper? Can I receive both? Or if I want to send digital only to a grandson, can I subscribe to that only for him? Yes. If you're a print subscriber, you automatically get the digital access. Um, so you do get both. Uh, and it is possible to subscribe to just the digital. They're not exactly the same, I would have to say, because a print layout is different than a digital layout. There's a few features that don't appear in the digital um, edition, but, but not many anymore. And actually this is a change that's coming um, this month. We are going to post the entire print edition in a digital format for our print subscribers so they can see see it online exactly the way it looks in print. We've done that for a few issues and um, we think that it should be done for every issue now. Does that explain it? You could, you could subscribe to digital for $30 only. Um, it has basically all of the content of the print edition, but you don't get the same beauty of the layout, I have to say. Um, and print subscribers have access to both. The only difference with looking at an article online is that there's going to be hyperlinks that are easy to access in an online article. Whereas if you're reading it in print, you have to go up to your browser and type in the URLs if you want to access the reference articles. Personally, I think it's worth getting the print edition because I think the layout's very pretty. Okay, a follow-up question from Nancy Olson. Is that where password is required? I used to have, but we'll have to call in again to get it. Uh, you do need to set a password um, to access the site. You should be able to set it so you don't have to, to enter it every time. And you can reset your password online, but if you do have problems, uh, do call us and we can reset the password for you. Okay, next question is from Leon, uh, Leon Johnson to everyone. Uh, does a subscription include access online to past issues and are past issues archived anywhere online? That is, that is really a great question. Um, if you subscribe digitally or to the print digital, you have access to about 6,000 articles online. So if you're researching a given topic, it's a great resource. Um, currently the past print issues are not accessible online, but if you wanted the whole issue, you could email me and I, I do have them archived. They, they used to be archived online, but I, we really felt that it wasn't fair that digital only subscribers were getting access to the old print issues because they, they never paid for them. And there has to be a motivation to, to a, be a print subscriber as well. Okay. Um, you have access to the content with those 6,000 articles. And it's fairly easy to find what you want by using the search function. Say if you wanted to research rose mauling and you typed in rose mauling, um, you could pull up those articles quickly. You could pull up all the articles that Bill Halverson has written by searching for his name. And we're actually working on a new um, author index that will, um, a page will give information about all of our writers and um, a quick link to all of their articles. Okay, the next question from Sherry Johnson to everyone, how do we sign up at the reduced rate? Good question. 
Um, you can email subscribe at na-weekly.com and just say Minda Shirkin and uh, we will set you up. Um, I'm currently working on a new subscription service that will uh, take uh, rebate codes and that should be up and running in the next two weeks. But for the time being, I would, I would email subscribe at naweekly.com or call us. It will set it up for you. Just let us know that you're Minda Shirkin. Okay, the next question is for me actually. Um, my Norwegian ancestors uh, went to Chicago and eventually a piece at a time floated up to Minneapolis. And I'm just curious, is there still a big viable Norwegian community, Norwegian American community in the Chicago area? Yes, it still is alive and well. And uh, they're probably because they have their Minnesirk in there, which is the epicenter of the community. Um, there's still active chapters of Sons of Norway, Torske Klubet. It's a little bit more spread out because it's a large metropolitan area, but I would say, yes, it's still alive and well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next question also from me. Um, you mentioned sister city organizations. And I was surprised recently to find out that Minneapolis does not have a sister city in Norway. Um, it has a sister city in Sweden. Um, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> uh, I forget the name right now. I, I should know. But um, you know, is that much of a process to become a sister city? You know, it, it is. There is a process involved. Um, you can visit the Sister Cities International website uh, to get more information at sistercities.org, but uh, there has to be a memo of understanding between the two munis municipalities. Um, generally, there's some requirement that there's some commonality between the two cities, that the pairing makes sense in some ways. Um, and then there's a formal application process. There has to be interest expressed on both sides. Um, but I, I think Sister Cities International is very interested in developing these relationships. Um, citizen diplomacy has become more and more important actually as other international cooperation has, has been weakened, quite frankly. Uh, in recent times. And, um, you know, when Eisenhower formed Sister Cities International, things were very, very different. It was part of an effort to rebuild Japan and Europe after the Second World War. Um, and he had a very simple notion that if every American had one friend abroad, if they could connect on a ground level, a person to person level, that we would see fewer conflicts in the world. And I, I think that's a very idealistic and very noble notion, but I, I actually think it works because you really do view another culture differently if you know somebody personally. And it's it's been a, it's transformed a lot of people's lives over the years. And now it also goes both ways. Uh, it's not only us providing um, ideas and aid and innovation uh, to other countries. Uh, there's a funneling of information going, coming our way as well. Um, we did a project here in Seattle a couple of years ago on um, addiction services in Bergen. And uh, I don't know how well known it is, but Bergen is 
had a very serious problem with with heroin for many decades, and they have very advanced um, harm reduction programs in place. And it's unfortunately a problem that we we deal with here in Seattle. That was a very fruitful uh, discussion and exchange and going both ways, actually. Okay, and then there's the last stuff. question. So there's the fun stuff, all the cultural exchanges, I should add. Um, nobody else has a question in the chat, but if they if they do, just go ahead and type it. I have one last one. Uh, first of all, I remembered Minneapolis sister city as Uppsala, which is kind of natural. But in the Seattle area, and you'll know exactly where it is, I think it's Fremont, there is a troll under a bridge eating a Volkswagen bug. And I have to ask if there's um, Norwegian background to creating that thing in the first place? That's a great question. Uh, I <laughs> don't believe there is, but the artists that that created it, of course, uh, studied or uh, consulted with Scandinavian scholars about that. And um, we actually have a story planned about it for this spring. So we'll, we'll get the exact scoop on the Fremont troll. It's one of the most popular pieces of arts in the city and visited by so many people. I, I drive by there often and you rarely don't see somebody there taking a, a photo or a selfie. So you have that story to look forward to. Can Hello. I ask a question? What what stories are you missing? What would you like us to write about? The, the troll is actually huge. I've taken grandchildren there when my daughter lives in Seattle and, and they can climb up and all, all around it and behind it and over it. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, he's got a um, full size Volkswagen so, bug in his hand. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, there's no other questions in the in the chat room. I just have you, you talked about uh, relationships with people in other countries. Well, I'm I'm married to one. My wife's actually from Belgium, and I was looking recently. I'll hold it up. It's a it's a book called Encyclopedia of the Viking Age, and it, inside it says she gave it to me on on our thirtieth wedding anniversary which is, believe it or not, 20 years ago now. And I was just scanning stuff. And as an encyclopedia, there are things in alphabetical order. And one of the entries is for Charlemagne, who became you know, a Holy Roman Emperor in the year 800. Well, we know the Vikings raided England in 793, actually one short one before that, and then uh, seemed to fall in love with England. But around 799 said there's there's other places up up for the you know easy pickings which was essentially all the northern european cities what's now in in holland belgium france and charlemagne didn't like vikings encroaching on what was his territory so he ordered that forts be built along all the major rivers that would provide valuable access to, well, you name it, Paris for one. And Charlemagne lasted about 30 years. And then as often happens, the funding for those forts and staffing disappears. So that was kind of the, uh, the end of it, but he at least made an effort to protect the, the wealth and people under his empire. Oh, I see there's a couple other questions here. Um, let me, okay. Well, a uh, suggestion from Jeanette Hendrickson. Uh, an article on healthcare in Norway would be very interesting. I don't know if you want to comment to that one. Uh, yes. In the past, we have written about healthcare in Norway. Um, uh, 
comparing the systems, but there's always something to write there. And I think right now with COVID-19, there's a lot to be said about how they're handling the crisis, uh, what might be different, um, their success rates, their challenges. And actually that's something I am working on. There's a lot of grant money available from the US government to write about COVID-19 in uh, other countries. So we're hoping to secure um, funds to do that. Um, so yes, absolutely. Um, they're having problems with their rollout of the vaccine right now uh, as well, uh, which is something we wanna look at in the news. So um, absolutely. Okay. There's a question from Nancy Olson. I think it refers to the, the, the previous question. She says, I agree, as I have heard of different opinions on that. I'm, I'm assuming that's referring to news or healthcare coverage. Yes. It's not really a question, just a statement. Yeah, Nancy? Yeah, that's what it was. Of, of the uh, different opinions on the healthcare of Norway of uh, is it really that great because of the difference of, I think they get it for free. Well, nothing's for free, but, <laughs> you know, compared to the United States and how much it costs. I'm sorry, I have to break in right now. I, our host is saying that she has a next meeting and she can't cut out, uh, she needs to free up this channel. So oh. we say thank you very much we have gone over our time but i let you run over thinking that it would be really helpful and thank you mary joe for introducing we appreciate that thank you dick for handling the questions anna Britt, do you want to make a quick closing it has to be very quick could i just make one final comment before yes. that yeah. uh, if if you haven't been subscribing uh, we can send you back issues, but also uh, I wanted to thank Mary Jo for not only inviting me, but also we work together. She's put out a compendium of all of her articles that she wrote for the paper in 2020 uh, about Norwegian artists. And she's put together a, a really great book a uh, Norway art book, and you could order that as well. That would give you a really good introduction to what we offer uh, in her arts column. So um, contact Mary Jo about that. And thank you all again. It's been a real pleasure to talk thank to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It's been a rewarding session. And now, Anna Britt. Yeah. I will just say a uh, coming Sunday service from Mindekirken will be from uh, with the topic Martin Luther King Day. So that will be marvelous, I think. And, um, and I will mention March, Tuesday Open House. We will have uh, Trun Bakkevik from Norway talking about Norway as a peacemaker country. And, and I'm looking forward to that. So Take, uh, receive the blessing. Herren vil signe dig og bevare dig. Herren la sitt ansikt lyse over dig og være dig nådig. Herren løfter sitt åsyn på dig og gi dig fred. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all for coming. It's been a wonderful day. We'll see you in February. Bye now. Bye everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. I wish I could be there to give you a hug. So I'll give you a virtual hug. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Lori Ann. I'm sorry that we have to go. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you for hosting. Bye. Hada. Bye. Hada. Hada. You can shut us all down, Jeanette. Okay. I will shut it. I will end the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.